Welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, the show that helps you plan, write, and publish your book, even if you're a beginner or just feel like one. Now, for your host, she's written over a dozen books and helps others bring their books to life. Here she is, Maciel. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yo, dude, we made it. We made it to 2021. And I want to say good job. No matter wherever you um, started 2020 and then ended 2020, you did it. You are awesome. You are an amazing human being. And, you know, you're here. You're listening to this, which means that you're like, nothing's going to stop you. Okay. And that is what I'm here for. We are going to keep going. So I just want to say that you are awesome. You are a writer. And if you're listening to this right now, it means that you've got that goal and you are not giving up on that goal. So I want to say, yes, you go. You've got this. Okay, y'all. So I'm super pumped up for um, this content that we're having right here because we're going to be talking about how to plan for your book in 2021. Now, if if you're thinking to yourself, like, you're like, oh my gosh, well, I'm not sure if I should, or, you know, 2020 was a lot, but maybe 2021 isn't a year that I should do it. No way. If you have that book inside of you, there's no reason why you can't write that book. I actually just got off a call with someone who was talking about whether he should or shouldn't actually write the book. And I was like, bro, like, If you have that story in your heart, you should. You know, even if you feel like your space might be crowded, your voice is original. So keep that in mind. And I want you to know that I'm cheering for you and other writers are cheering you on, you know, wherever they may be. So you've got this. All right. So we're going to be talking about planning for your next book. How do you plan for your book in 2021? Great question. So tip number one is research. Now, this is something that I always do with my clients and also with myself when I'm planning any writing projects or essays. So the first thing you want to do is a research. Now, this is really like a really basics of research. Um, you want to go in and just find out what other genres or what those books in your genre are doing. So maybe you uh, really like romance, but you're not really sure which genre. You can look at all the genres that you're interested in and then dive into them. And specifically, what I want you to do is to um, look at the pages, number of pages, number of words. What does the book look like? You know, what does the cover look like? Because usually covers will match the other ones in the genre because they're trying to let you know that they're part of that genre. Also, even down to the author, like um, is the author as one certain demographic or maybe they're all using like three middle names, you know, that kind of stuff. Go ahead and look at the actual statistics of the books that are like in the top 20 of the genre you're looking for. So for example, if you're looking into like um, contemporary or new adult uh, romance, you'd go to that category, you look at the top 20 and see what they have in common. But also take note, look at each and every one of them and note like, okay, this is how many pages are in this book. This is how many pages are in that book. This is how many words are in that book, you know, and find the data so you can like uh, compare all of them and see what you'll be reaching for for your next book. So for example, if you find out that most of the books are approximately 20,000 words, then you know that that's going to be your goal for your book, 20,000 words, for example. So that's tip number one is to research. Tip number two is to work backwards. Now, this is something that is really great because it helps you to reverse engineer something. So you think about a book and you think about what goes into a book, writing it, drafting it or drafting it, writing it, um, and then maybe some research if you do like a historical romance or perhaps you are you know trying to write a nonfiction book. Um, also, um, the editing and the different types of editing um, and maybe cover design. Maybe you can do your own cover, which is awesome. So all of that needs to be considered inside your plan. Now, once you kind of tell yourself, okay, like if I take this long to write a book, then I take this long to edit a book, you know, adding those dates together, I can look at approximately this point in time, I'm going to be done with my book. And when you reverse engineer like that, I want you to add on some cushion because there's always going to be some hiccups, maybe tech glitches or um, some external help that doesn't get to you in time, or maybe you just get sick and you know, that can take off two weeks right there. So add in some buffer time, a couple more weeks, just so you know that you've got yourself some space in case things happen um, because they usually do and that's totally okay. Don't beat yourself up. It's totally, totally normal. Remember, when the obstacles come in, that doesn't mean that you need to stop writing your book. That's not a sign that says, why, well, this is it. I need to stop. No way. Actually, 
sometimes it's the opposite. I believe it's the opposite, which is sometimes when obstacles come in the way, it's because like you're supposed to write this book. You are meant to write this book. And it's going to be difficult because things are getting thrown in your way. It's kind of like making it a really cool adventure. So keep that in mind as motivation for moving forward. Okay, next, after you work backwards, then you're going to grab your planner. I love the passion planner. I absolutely love this. So also, fun fact, I'm giving these away. You'll find that on my Instagram. So Maciel writes on Instagram, or you can follow Facebook. Uh, my company is on Facebook, Blackhearted Studios, LLC. Blackhearted Studios, LLC. So you'll find the giveaway on there. I'm giving away a passion planner um, for 2021. And it's going to be this size, different color though, because I was like, you know, I've got to give people variety. So um, you'll find that on there. So follow me on Instagram, Maciel Writes, and on Facebook, Blackhearted Studios, LLC. I'm on there. So grab your planner. I love this planner. This one's blue. It's helping to support the oceans. I'm like, I love that. So what you're going to do is after you've worked backwards, you're going to set those um, dates that are approximately where it falls. So remember, don't forget your buffer. Then look at your calendar and say, okay, well, if I will finish this book in six months. Then according to my editing and cover design and everything like that, you know, add it into your calendar, put it into your planner, not only on the big parts, like the actual monthly view, but also put it into the smaller parts, like the weekly parts as well, so that you know that you're kind of staying on track. Now, remember, this isn't about beating yourself up if you miss a day or even a week, or sometimes even more. You know, this is not about beating yourself up. If I've learned anything from my coaching clients, it's that guilt and shame do not move the needle forward. It's compassion and like self-love that move the needle forward. Because the more that you're having fun, the more that you're going to show up. So use your planner or use a digital one. I love like paper. So obviously this is the writer. So go ahead and do whatever is going to push you forward. All right. My next tip is make the goal as small as possible. So whatever resonates with you, if you can break down your writing process, and let's just take that first stage of actually writing the draft, um, make it as small as possible. Maybe you need to write 1000 words a day. Maybe the words don't really resonate with you. Maybe you need to write two pages a day. So make your goal as small as possible. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you feel like, like, oh, maybe um, having the word count doesn't work for you or the pages doesn't work for you, keep going, kind of play with it, and you're going to find what works for you. You know, for me, word count doesn't usually like stir me on, but pages do. I really like saying pages, especially physical pages. So to kind of play with how you write. Maybe that's handwritten, maybe it's dictation, maybe it's computer, and then also um, what kind of goal you're going to do. All right, the next one is to set daily realistic goals. Now, I love, love, love a huge chunk of writing time. Like, I love to be like, okay, a whole Saturday, this whole Saturday is going to be actually given to my writing. Now, does that usually happen realistically? Oh, you know, you got family, you've got, you know, things to do, you got chores, and I used to be able to go hang out, but that was before COVID. Um, and, you know, sometimes the things fall into your lap. So instead, I mean, as much as that is amazing, and if you can do it, then awesome. But if you can't, then it's okay to set small realistic goals. So if your goal is to do like two pages every couple of days, then tell yourself, hey, today I'm going to do half a page. Tomorrow I'll do another half of a page. So setting them daily will help you to like really incrementally get there. Now, one thing about this that I've learned in 2020, especially is the feeling of having a successful day. Now that was really interesting to me. So I thought that if I had an amazing writing day, I would feel beautifully exhausted. And I think that you guys can resonate with this. And it's like when you work hard enough or you work diligently enough that at the end of the day, you're exhausted. And when you feel exhausted, you're like, okay, that means that I had a very successful, very productive day. Now, that is something that I'm actually trying to unwire from myself because I'm realizing that that doesn't necessarily gauge my success. And also, it makes me feel really bad when I don't have a day like that. And more often than not, I don't have days like that. And we shouldn't be having days that we shouldn't be working ourselves to the bone so much that we're stuck inside our office 24 seven and our family doesn't even recognize who we are anymore. So what I'm trying to say is that when you're done with your page count for the day and you feel like, well, that was it. That was super easy. If that was easy, was that correct? You know, yes, it's totally okay. It's totally okay if you feel like it was easy and if you feel like you could have done more, but if you met your goal, check mark, you're done. You know, I just want you to know that it's okay, it's okay to be comfortable with that feeling of not feeling like, oh, I was like on fire. Just being like, all right, cool, that was done. 
that's a successful. We're going to move on. Awesome. Okay. Next, and this is probably counterintuitive, is celebrate. And I'm totally serious. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Every time you hit a micro milestone, or if you just hit your goal for that day, celebrate yourself. And that doesn't have to be go throwing a party every single time. It's probably expensive, but like actually tell yourself, Hey, good job. Like, Hey, Mosian, good job. I did it. I actually met my goal. I was dedicated to myself and I honored myself and that was awesome. And that's, what's going to help you move forward is to celebrate yourself. Because if you, like I said earlier, like if it's guilt and shame all the time, you're going to get yourself burned out and writing's not going to be fun. And the whole point of these videos and of my business is to help you have fun in your writing. All right. So that's the, um, other part and the last tip. Also, before I forget, actually, it's the end of January. It's not the end of January. It's the middle of January. And, um, I want to let you know that Black Heart Story Studios is having 10 coaching spots. These are 90 minute sessions with me that we can plan your book together. It's a single session. We sit down for 90 minutes, you and I on Zoom, and we talk about your book. We dissect your book. We get your plan going. We get your deadlines going. We fill out your planner. We also really dive into your, your writer's mind block. So if you're like, I want to write a book, but I just don't feel like I can, or I feel like I'm not worthy enough, or I feel like I don't have a good story, or like, oh my God, you know, my story, it's already out there. You know, how can I even like uh, make my own original? We're going to talk about that too. And I'm going to help you create those mantras, those, um, that plan, the written plan, not just the plan for writing your book, but the plan for when you feel low, we're going to also go back in and say, okay, this is what you're going to tell yourself. This is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to make up for it on those days that, you know, you actually fall behind and it's totally okay. So again, that's 10 coaching spots available through January, through January, 2021. Uh, so you can have your year ahead. And also the first five people who jump onto this list will also get a complimentary session down the road. So you get a free session later. So it's like as if it's like, yeah, I'm checking up on you. Accountability. You know that I'm going to check up on you. So all of the work that we do in that first session, oh, there's like another reason why you got to get it done. All right. So if that's interesting to you and if you're like, yes, 2021 is the year I'm finally going to do it. I'm finally going to stop putting myself second. Then, um, Email me, Maciel at blackheartstudios.com. You need to just fill in a questionnaire um, to see like how you can fit into this really short program. Um, so Maciel at blackheartstudios.com. That's M-A-S-S-I-E-L at blackheartstudios.com. Again, that's only 10 coaching spots and the first five get that complimentary session. So I'm telling you guys first. All right, um, y'all, I hope this helps you in planning your 2021 and remember, Remember that your story matters and you can do this and you can write however you need to write. Um, as long as you get your book done, you are moving forward. All right. Thank you guys. And we'll see you later. Hey there, writer. Thank you for listening to the How to Write a Book podcast with your host, Masier Valenzuela. If you like the show, we'd be happy if you left a review. For more information on writing and the writer's life, go to www.themasiel.com. That's www.themasiel.com. We'll see you on the other side.